Hi, welcome back to Vela News TV. We're here at the start of Stage 17 in Poe with Chris Horner. Chris, a lot to talk about since the last time we spoke. Uh, you've moved up another spot in GC. I think you're now 15th. That's three spots. 14th, come on. Is it, oh, 14th. I'm sorry, 14th. Uh, what's your take on the Rasmussen situation? I think it was uh, the right thing to do, definitely. It, there's, it, like we talked about yesterday, there are a lot of, lot of questions to be asked about the length of time that one has disappeared and can't get a hold of. So it, it was a good thing to do. Maybe a little late in coming, but still nonetheless, uh, they pulled it out. So it's good for the sponsor to, to take care of it that way. Yeah. Uh, with Rasmussen gone, Cadell moves into second. We've got two relatively flat stages, the time trial and the Champs de Zay. How does that change tactics for the team, and how could that change uh, the way your next few days are going to be? Well, I'd say now, seriously racing for the win, there's no doubt about it. With Rasmussen in first, it was a bit far to ask. If, you, if the two had a really bad time trial, it was doable, but, but it was a bit harder task to, to overtake Rasmussen than it would be Contador. Granted, Contador's time trial and well, too, but... 55k time trial you don't even have to be having a bad day you just got to be a little bit off because already Cadell's the better of the two time trialists and Contador's going to need every second that he could get in order to hold off Cadell if he's having just even a slightly bad day. Well it's interesting because if Cadell does uh, take the jersey would you think it would be Saturday I mean would Cadell have one day in yellow basically in Paris or do you think we're going to see some GC racing in the next few flat stages? I, I couldn't possibly imagine to see GC race. And, I mean, you're looking at the three guys that, and e even Cadell, he's not going to be sprinting for time bonuses. It's just not what he does. Levi doesn't do that. I'm, I don't know Contador really well, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't do that. Uh, so I, I think you're really going to be looking at maybe some guys outside of the top ten trying to get into the breaks, trying to move into the top ten, and so on and so forth. But in general, I think for what the viewers at home want to know is, is are the three guys really going to race it out? I don't think so until the time trial because you're going to be wanting to save. They're going to need every bit of strength they can get and they're going to need to be rested to make sure that they don't have a slightly off day on the time trial, level yet even a bad day on the time trial. Well, we know you're rooming with Cadell. Uh, were you there when he got the news about Rasmussen and what's his uh, state of mind? Yeah, I mean it was it was good. It wasn't something. It wasn't a huge surprise. Everyone should have been planning that. I mean, we've we've talked about that since since the rumors started coming out that it was a possibility that he could be leaving. I mean, even with the team when Rasmussen was riding so good, we were really focused on okay, stay with Contador. Rasmussen's riding extremely well in the climbs. It's not an option to stay with him so much. Uh, of course. Plan A is always, if you're spectacular, kill everyone. But plan B is always the more reliable plan and the more realistic plan. It's, it's okay, Rasmussen's, Rasmussen's riding extremely well. Stay with Contador as much as you can. And, and uh, maybe, maybe Rasmussen gets pulled out, maybe he doesn't. We didn't know that for sure. But it was always something that everyone was thinking about. Yeah, well, it's obviously not the way you want to move up in GC. But at the same time, it really... You know, changes things, and now Cadell has a realistic chance of winning the Tour de France. Well, it changes a lot of things too, because by pulling him out late, also Rasmussen helped Contador gain time on Evans, so that has affected GC without a doubt. I mean, you can go back to yesterday's stage, and you can go back to the other mountain stages, uh, three mountain stages in general. You can go back to, and uh, certainly see where Con where Contador and Rasmussen were working together well and gaining time on Cadell versus if it was just Contador up there, maybe it only would have gained 10, 15, 20 seconds versus the minute and 53 or so that he has on yeah. him right now. So he absolutely has affected the GC even with Rasmussen leaving. Yeah, I was sorry to see your name on the medical communique at the end of the stage yesterday. It said <laughs> digestive problems. What can you tell us about that? Uh, nothing strange. I've Jeff I get them all the time, especially in a three-week race. All it was just upset stomach, and as soon as we really started racing hard, then it disappeared too. So it wasn't a problem. Wow, I went back to the medical car first and got and just got stuff for the stomach being upset and stuff, and then either that solved it or racing hard solved it, one or the other. One last question. Lost in all the news with Moraney and Rasmussen yesterday was the rider protest at the start of the stage. Uh, I wanted to get your perspective on that, your take. Don't even know what it was about. Ask uh, English-speaking guys on French teams. They didn't even know what it was about. All I know is that doing it right before a stage start, doing it at the Tour de France in general is a bad place to do it. 
There's, if, if riders really want to get together, hire a lawyer, let's get a good union going, and let's take care of business that way. But let's not take care of business at the start line of the Tour de France. I mean, I flew all the way from the U.S. to be over here. I haven't seen my kids for months, and I come over here to do the Tour de France. I love the other races, and don't get me wrong, they're, they're fantastic. But this is the race I really come over here for. If I, wanted to, if I didn't want to do the Tour de France, then I'd be living in the States right now, and I'd have my kids with me. So I, was, I, was, I thought I was going to have to walk over a couple French guys, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like it was a little tense there where you've got guys at the front blocking, guys trying to get through. Maybe some people know what's going on, some don't. Rasmussen starts the race. I mean, I mean, I was yelling in the back. I'm coming through regardless. I said, I'm racing. Get out of my way. I'm coming through. And then the guy started going through, making a little hole, and then we just started pushing our way through. And and we left. And I don't know, 20, 40 guys, whatever, stayed at the line or something. But eventually they caught up. All right, Chris. Well, we've got plenty more questions for you as always, but uh, we'll have to hit you with those tomorrow. Thanks again for the time. All right. Thanks. Thanks for viewing.